anything we can do at that early stage of life, and especially in an impoverished region like that, I think really is very, very important. So I'm interested in the, the neural basis of pleasure. I'm trying to understand what kind of networks are involved in pleasure and you know, especially by understanding these networks in normals, we're very much trying to find out what happens when they break down, when there's a lack of pleasure, anhedonia. And so we try to find ways in which we can restore pleasure in people's lives. What I do in my research is I have a sort of a threefold way of looking at things. I look at pleasure in normal people and I use things like neuroimaging and behavioral methods to try to work out what it is that gives people's pleasure and why and understand to sort of tease the components apart. Turns out that pleasure is sort of a quite a complex entity. In fact, pleasure consists of many smaller portions, if you like, components. There's a wanting, you know, a desire. There's the liking, which is close to what we normally talk about when we call pleasure. And then there's the learning involved with those. It turns out that it has different kind of brain mechanisms and it's teasing those apart, which is sort of the, the challenge. And once you're doing that in normal people, you can then either look at how they develop and that, of course, is very important, how they develop in the infant brain and in the interactions between parent and infants. And if you could somehow get that in the right kind of way, then you could eventually come up with a, with a way in which these infants will have fuller lives, better lives. But then, of course, sometimes they will end up depressed, they will end up with various illnesses, where anhedonia, the lack of pleasure, is a huge problem. And one of the things we are very interested in is trying to find out how we can then help with that. We're using things like deep brain stimulation, implanting electrodes into their brains in order to help them, but also trying to work out whether see whether we can do behavioral cognitive based interventions and see whether we can help with that as well. One of the interesting things when we look at the early development is how important the first 18 months are and how the relationship between the mother and the father and the baby really is. And that relationship, if something goes wrong with that, if you have a mother or father who are postnatally depressed, what tends to happen is that baby, that infant, will long-term have the potential to have poor outcomes. 18 to 20 years later, they may become more anxious or more depressed, suggesting that their hedonic tone, their amount of pleasure they have in their lives, is somewhat compromised. And so obviously anything we can do to help the mothers and fathers will not only make the mothers and fathers' lives better, but also that of the infants. So one of the sort of very interesting work with some of the colleagues that I've been involved with is exactly trying to measure this. Some of my colleagues recently did a trial, a randomized control trial in South Africa in a small township close to Cape Town, and they showed that in this, this particular township where, you know, 40% of the women are postnatally depressed, they are very poor, they have HIV, they're usually single. This, of course, you know, if you could somehow help with that kind of relationship, you could potentially lift a whole generation. And my colleagues showed that in this randomized control trial, that if you just trained local women and basically had them intervene in order to help the parents, or in this case, just the mother, actually interact with the baby in, in, a, in a meaningful way, two years down the line, they did much better than the, the, the other group. So I think these are tangentializing evidence of how important it is. Obviously, we don't have long-term data on this, but anything we can do at that early stage of life, and especially in an impoverished region like that, I think really is very, very important. And it also, I think, speaks to the importance of translating the neuroscience into something very practical, which I think, you know, after all, is why we're doing it.